Hello, my wealthy wife, fam, and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Man Rich Man, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent, rich, and wealthy romance. How are you doing, wealthy wife, fam, and friends? Okay, I have a quick question. I, I hope this isn't only me, but do any of you also get thrown off a day when we have like holidays during the week? I have sat here and had to look at my clock, num um, iPad numerous times to remind myself today is Sunday. I keep thinking it's Monday. I know, right? Yesterday I kept thinking it was Sunday. I'm assuming I thought Friday was Saturday. Am I the only one? Please don't say I am. <laughs> so anyway... I want to start out by saying, once again, thank you for joining me. I'm so happy that you're here with me, and I hope you guys have been having an amazing weekend. Um, I don't know about you, but I've taken advantage of some of these Black Friday sales. Oh, absolutely. Got a few things I definitely desired and needed in reference to business and a couple personal things. And for those of you, before I forget, for those of you that actually took, have taken advantage of the Wealthy Wife Academy Black Friday special, those 90% off bundles I put together for you guys specifically for Black Friday, the weekend. Thank you. I have some alumni, returning alumni, so welcome home, ladies. And I also have some brand new official Wealthy Wife Goddaughters. Thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I really, really am. And for those of you that are still eyeballing the specials, remember, it's 90% off. Let me put that in other terms. You're only paying literally 10% of what the course, the regular tuition is for these courses. The bundles, there are four bundles. If you've taken a look at them, we have the Courtesan Bundle, the uh, Priestess, Muse, and the Trinity. The Trinity actually is a combination of all the classes in the other three bundles. 90% off. I'm saying this like, like I'm saying it because this literally is a once in a lifetime opportunity. There will never be another 90% off Wealthy Wife Academy sale. Promise you, it won't. This was something I really did because I missed Black Friday last year because just Vegas was last holiday season was just interesting in Vegas last year. So I missed Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So I want to make sure I did something really special for you guys this year because I just, I'm in such a great place. I am so happy and I want to share the joy. So if you're still eyeballing the discount, it officially ends 11.59 p.m. tonight. Sunday, November 26th, the year is 2023. I am putting this in here because the video will be up for many years to come because that's something I'm discussing in addition to the Black Friday specials. So we have until literally 11.59 p.m. this evening to take advantage of 90% off. Yes, I have some things coming up for Cyber Monday, which will go for a couple of days for Cyber Monday, but the bundles are gone. I'll be taking them down at midnight because I will be up at midnight. So they will be gone 11.59 p.m. today, final day. So hopefully more of you will actually come join us, have a chance to come and be part of those monthly calls that we'll be doing. Come join the goddaughters and me. I love, love, love this so much. It is such a great space. I kid you not. And it is family. You know, I call my clients goddaughters for a reason. Because, especially now that I have finally had the time to catch my breath. I've spent so many years here putting together materials. Because I just, there's such a need I see out there for information. There are some great people teaching. So I'll never say I'm the only one, obviously. But there are so many people that have great information but I still see so much garbage out there because it's feeding on your fears. I have issues when it comes to feeding on your fears and your vulnerabilities. My goal is always to be the safe place, which it is, for you to come, to be literally reborn into the woman that you're meant to be. So I, so I say, I do appreciate those of you that are my long-term subscribers here on my YouTube channel. You've been with me for years, and I do appreciate you. If you're one of my new or newer subscribers to the YouTube channel, I want to say welcome to the world of Wealthy Wife, and thank you as well. The information I share, I'm sharing because I'm here to fortify you. I'm here to remind you just how great you are when you allow yourself to stand in a space of being this woman. 
Either you're growing into her or maybe you have, you're standing in that space because I'm in the space of being really, really fully aware of who I am. But even in that space of awareness, there's still growth. I've said before, personal evolution, it never stops. We just find different things that we're going to work on and elevate into. It's a beautiful process. But I have a question because I ran across something on Instagram the other day. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. And can anyone else relate to this topic? Because this, this, this is something that is, just bugs me. We already know this. If you've been with me on my YouTube channel, if you're in the world of wealth and wealth as a goddaughter, you know how much I despise, and it is despise, catchphrases. I get so tired of these trending words. I understand that we need things to inspire us. I understand that, you know, there are things that will click in our brain to help us, you know, shift our thinking. I get this. But then people catch on to things and just, it's just overkill. And I, this, once again, it's a high value thing. Am I the only one who is sick of hearing that? Am I the only one? Please say I'm not. Because my question is this, you know, the high value woman and the high value man. Who decided you were low value? Who decided your low value? And who has set the terms? I get it. I get it. There are some people whose behavior is atrocious. Absolutely. And there are some people that are fully ratchet. I get this too. But let's take them out the equation because they're not the only individuals we're talking about, just so you know. Because when I periodically do step into the space and listen to videos, because I said before, I do listen to other people's stuff. Some of the stuff I listen to is great. Oh my God, it's amazing. Some of the stuff I listen to is just somebody else basically regurgitating their fears on you, their listeners. No. No. No, we're not doing this. Because here's my thing. Why are we, why are we teaching from a place of fear? I told you before, I walked away from organized religion decades ago. I barely was in it when I was in it, okay? Just because it makes no sense to me. And when I hear that whole low value and high value thing, it to me it spins into my brain this whole thing of like coming out of Christianity. Now, the version of Christianity that I was raised with initially, because my mother's family was hardcore, you know, with the fire and the brimstone and the angry God. Arr. And as a child, I was like going, this is make it still makes no sense to me. And hear me, I understand there are different layers and levels of God. There, there really are. That I've, as I've studied over the years, I'm learning things, and things are coming to light now for the general public to also be aware of and not happy to learn. There are different layers because the universe, the energy that is everything, it really has no, you know, highs, lows, it, it, the, the, whatever. It's everything. So it's going to experience the good, it experience not so great. It experiences everything because it creates everything. It is looking for us to take the higher road. It's looking for us to have these experiences that elevate. But once again, it really has no opinion on because cause and effect is a universal law. You do right, you receive great things. You do sucky stuff, eventually it's going to hit you, it's going to kick you in the face. But do we know when? Not always, but it's cause and effect. It'll catch you this lifetime, maybe a different one. It's coming. Your reward, your punishment has nothing to do with whether, whether you being born in sin. Because that's what I think when I hear this whole thing. I, I, I hear that in my head. Oh, you know, you're born in sin. As a child, I, said, oh, I couldn't wrap my head around. I'm thinking, how can a baby, an innocent child, a, you know, the spirit that comes in initially into that body, boom, it takes the first breath, boom, spirit enters body, boom, here we are. How can that still, that, that helpless little baby be sinful? Now, don't be wrong, it's going to grow up and do some crazy stuff, but still, initially, when it comes in, I'm not, I'm not grasping this. And I always had an issue once again with this, this, this angry man on this mountain, this, this European descent man. That was my first problem because I'm like, okay, based upon what I read in the Bible, I'm created. It said, let's create them in our image. No, it said our folks. It didn't say his image. It said our, meaning there was more than one creator when you read your book. Okay. There actually was, but I'm not going to go into that today. I'll say that for a different day, different, different space, but still our image. So that means there were multitudes that actually created whatever they were creating. So once again, there had to be a Mrs. God there too, right? I'm thinking I'm a girl and it must be somebody brown because my skin is light brown. I'm not 
Once again, so I'm trying to add, you know, connect these dots as a child. And then the anger. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. That's child abuse. You know, do as I say or suffer forever. Or, you know, they suppose they gave you a ticket out of it when they, you know, the whole, whole thing about the Jesus the Christ. Once again, I'm not going to go into that topic because that's another topic that, once again, I will not discuss here because it goes deeper than most people realize. He was one of many, just so you know. But whatever. So they give you all these things. I'm listening to going, okay, so who's deciding that I'm, I'm awful? Who's deciding? Another person? Really? Okay. Hmm. But what makes them what makes them sinless? What makes them so perfect? What makes them so much better than me? And this is where I have issues with that whole high value, low value thing. Because when they're convincing you that your low value says who? Once again, we're not talking about the individuals. No women discuss. No, there are some people that are pretty that are awful. We get, I, I hear that. I get that. There are some folks that are horrible, definitely. But there are also individuals that continue to choose awful people because they're not they're refusing to work on self. You want to understand how to come out of a cycle which is causing you angst and anxiety is to work on self. One of the reasons why Wealthy Wife came about, because I'm watching information being shared with the women that is detrimental, that keeps you stuck in problems, that keeps you stuck in all these trauma bonds. In the space of wealthy wife, the goddaughters can tell you this. I shared a part of a testimonial um, that one of my goddaughters sent me the other day, who actually is um, purchased one of the bundles for the uh, Black Friday special. But she's already in the academy. She's also part of the Become Muse Masterclass. So she actually she bought that and she purchased that built that bundle in addition to work she's already doing inside the academy. Many goddaughters do. So I was laughing because, and she says it. You know, it's part of her journey, the material that she learns, the things that she's part of. And she actually does participate in the calls. She's been in a few of the calls. So I've had a chance to speak with her. Oh, my gosh. I have the most amazing goddaughters. The life experiences they go to go from mild to what the hell? I'm not kidding. I mean, some of them are going through some pretty traumatic stuff right now in reference to their physical, their health. And they're just the stuff they're going through in their life in general because they're on this journey to learn how to be their best version of themselves. And that's something that may happen to you. You may discover that once you unplug from the system, so to speak, and you're no longer letting people define you with all this wordplay, because understand it is wordplay. And if you've been with me long enough, you know how I am about words. Words are spell casting over your life constantly. This is why I'm always asking you to be conscious and aware of what you're saying, who you're allowing to speak over you, and who you're listening to because it has an impact on you energetically, your thoughts, your emotions, your physicality, your spirituality, and definitely will affect your finances. So when I when I do these word plays, you know, what, what qualities you have to have to be a high-value woman. Oh, and if you don't do these things, oh, you're terrible, or you're, you know, you're unworthy. <laughs> and I've said before, I am the poster child for some of the most self-righteous individuals out there. I am the poster child of what you shouldn't do if you want to be accepted and received by a man. Because so much of it, what I'm hearing, is still about you being suitable for a man to desire you. Now, you know that's a rant for me because this has nothing to do with you making yourself desirable for a man. He has to be. He has to come to you. And show himself worthy of you. I'm going to give an example. I think in terms, once again, because every time I hear that stuff, I think about it. I'm thinking, yeah, there are those who definitely, definitely, definitely think I'm unworthy. Older woman. Single mom. Children. Three different men. It wasn't actively done. I was being, I was being extremely careful. It wasn't like I was out here just randomly laying down anybody and everybody. No way, shape, or form was this happening. And I was being very, very careful. But guess what? You can be ultra careful and there's still that 0.1% that it might happen. And for some reason, as one of my best friends in college says, he goes, you're that test case. I'm like, what? He goes, 99.9% .9 of the population, this. He goes, then there's that 0.1% that, that, that exception to the rule. 
He goes, you're that point one. I'm like, shut up. But he's right. <laughs> I had to laugh. I thought, oh my God, he was so right. I am. I am that point one percent. I'm that. It's just me. And I love that about me. I love the fact that it's just, okay, part of who I am. Because I'm always questioning things. But once again, being even being super careful, it can still happen. Okay. Oh, what else about my life that people would look at going, sometimes going, oh my gosh, she's just, ugh. And I'm like, whatever. I thrive. And I thought about that because I keep hearing about this low value, high value stuff. And, you know, you have to do these things to be suitable for a man. You know, to make you suitable to be a wife. And then I sat down thought about the marriage proposals that I've received over the years. As an older woman, just so you know. Younger ones, I had some great ones when I was younger too, but especially as an older woman. When men have proposed to me over the past several years, they come to me offering up a kingdom, just so you know. They come to me offering estates. Let me say that again. They come to me offering estates. The proposals I have received over the past several years, they come, they explain to me why they desire to marry me, what they admire and love about me. Now, they may not be deeply in love with me at that moment because that kind of stuff grows over the years, but it is meeting me, spending time with me, getting to know me, me getting to know them. They see the value that I bring in as a woman, as me. Not just as a woman, but as me, as Sophia, okay? And how they feel when they're with me, how they thrive when they're with me, how I receive them, honor them, and elevate them through the energy, which is me. They bring me kingdoms. The proposals I shared over the years through the videos and audios. When the man has proposed to me, these have been all my past proposals recently, like I said, past several years. They're coming with resources. And not just a little, they're coming with a ton. Get together. If you say yes, Sophia, if you say yes, we're going to get together with my attorneys. I'll pay for yours, so go find attorneys that you feel will come to represent you properly. I'll pay you. They're willing to pay for the attorney. And I'm not having them pick the attorney. I, I would pick my own attorneys. They'd pay for them. We will sit down and go over the agreements because they have prenups. These are wealthy men. These are rich and wealthy men. They're prenups, which I agree with prenups. Absolutely. They're like, I'll show you what I've got. This is what is yours. And they give me a sample of what would be mine. If I say yes, they usually have the things where they're going to give to their children already put off in trust for the children already. Everything else would be mine. Some seriously substantial stuff. If I say yes, we would hash it out. Negotiation. And they love negotiation, just so you know. Anything in the prenup that I wouldn't, wouldn't happy with, we could talk about, readjust. Things I want to add to the pre's, making room for the post and the additional numbers that come after the prenup, after the marriage takes place. Great. This is the coolest thing to see how marriage proposals actually happen on the side of rich and wealthy. Because it's totally different than it is on the other side of the average person. Obviously, because they have so much more. But I think about this, and I'm sharing this with you guys for a reason. When they're talking about you becoming high value, or they're telling you that you know you're low value if you don't do ABC, it is incorrect. I like guess unless you are a thoroughly ratchet individual who just really has no personality, you're a narcissist, you're just a mean-spirited person, that's something different. That has nothing to do with low value. That's just a hateful person. Okay? That is something none of us need to be dealing with. But we're talking in terms of someone's values. And we all have different values based upon who it is we are learning to be and who we are actually being. I have very high expectations for the individuals I spend time with, just as I have high expectations for myself. So when I hear these things, once again, it bothers me because so often they're trying to, once again, put you guys in these little tiny boxes of this behavior that has nothing to do with you thriving. Will you fit in with the masses? Of course. If you want to behave yourself, are you going to be a good girl? Yeah, I'm being sarcastic as hell right now. I am. I am. Truly I am. Because to me, it's like, why? But I see it because once again, these are usually individuals that are still either living through their fears, which they're now continuing to teach you to also live in that particular fear, and some of them once again are on the path to their elevation because there is some good information out there, absolutely. But you must be aware of the wordplay. Why would you allow these words to affect your life? 
just like I said, the whole femininity movement, good Lord, I'll say it again. I still haven't figured out where that went off the rails, but it did because it's still about you becoming acceptable to be received as a wife or to be received as a girlfriend. You gotta make sure you're pretty and make sure you say the right things and make sure you do all these things to be able to tell some man will want you. No. Or the ones that are teaching you that men are garbage and how to take advantage of them. Why are we why why are you already anticipating problems? Why are you already putting yourself in front of something that you you have decided is going to be problematic? Why don't we just learn how to become a better version of self, learn what we truly desire so that we can be the right magnet for what it is you really desire that actually adds joy to your life? I'll say this again. There are plenty of great men out there that will happily, happily bring you the world because in him doing so, he is fulfilling his purpose. Even the men that are out there talking about, well, a woman has to, you know, she has to be Oops, I keep kicking things. She has to, you know, be a certain way or do certain things to be acceptable to men. Mm. Why? Because everything they're doing is to make themselves acceptable to be received by a woman. Even the ones that are out there telling you. They're still doing the things they do to attract a woman or women. Even your narcissist, even your headstrong misogynistic men are still doing the things they do to attract feminine energy. Now, they want to be the boss. They want to have all the same, but they're still doing it to attract a woman. Men are creating fortunes. Men create things, not for other men. They're competitive, yes, but the whole goal is that they're going to show off for the woman who allows him to select her. Did you hear what I just said? But they got you guys all twisted. They got you all twisted up. They've got so many of women are still teaching you guys to shrink. Oh, don't do that. Oh, no man's going to want you if you do this. I'll say it again. I'm the poster child. One of them. I could be. Of what you shouldn't do. Or no man's going to want you because. <laughs> ah. I never worry about attracting men. I never worry about, will I be alone? No, I know for a fact that any given time I decide to be in a relationship, any given time, if I choose to finally get married, I may or may not. I'll be honest with you guys. Sometimes I desire to do so. Sometimes I don't. I will never do a state license. That I can promise you. That is a fact. There will be no state licensing. I would do agreements or covenant with a personal covenant with somebody. Yes, absolutely. That's smart. We did that for eons. The marriage license is a brand new thing the state and planet put in place to make money off of you and to be head of your marriage. Look at it. Read the marriage. Pull up a marriage license. Go to your state. Pull it up. Find it. Go online. Read it. I'm here to enlighten. I am here once again to elevate my goddaughters and those of you that listen to the YouTube channel and we're going to take the information serious I'm sharing. We're past the point of just really nearly doing stuff because you're being told to do it. You're at a space in the world right now, energetically, where you're supposed to have opened up your eyes. 2020 happened for a reason. It's perfect vision. The veil is gone. You are now supposed to be seeing what's in front of you and then making your decisions wisely. Perfectly? Of course not. It's a learning curve. But you're supposed to be viewing things now with clearer vision and making decisions which are going to elevate you into being your personal truth. And when you're moving in the energy of being authentic, you now have the ability to be magnetic to what you desire. But I'll say it again, but you must make sure you're building out your vessel to be able to receive it and hold it. So it's about you allowing and being. Remember the words for this year. I have, don't have the new ones yet for next year. Frequency, allowing, and being. Those are probably three of the most challenging words I've had to give you guys thus far. Because it literally means you must be in alignment with who you are. Not, no worrying about other people's opinions. No worrying about the collective. No worrying about whether you're high value or low value if you do certain things or if you are a certain way. Because I say it again, I'm an older woman. Grown children. Grandchildren. And in some circles, I would be unacceptable. Which is fine. I have no desire for those circles. They have nothing to do with me. 
if a man is looking for a younger woman, he is not my person. There's no skin. There's no issue for me. Why would I be worried about it? Too often, women are attempting to make men into something he's not meant to be because he's not her person and she's not his. You focus on becoming your personal best. You work on focusing on learning what you like, what you love, what you desire. And this is this is the ticket, just so you know. That's the golden ticket. You want to know how to live a happy life? You have a desire to understand how to attract true love into your life? These are how, these are some of the steps that you must take. Is it easy? Initially, no, it is not. Because you're unlearning so much. But there's no fire and brimstone over here. There's no, you have to be this or you have to be that. No, my thing is this. All I require my goddaughters is that you learn how to be you. What does that mean? I don't know for you just yet. But you know what? We're going to figure it out together. And you're going to have, be able to do so in the space of a bunch of women, of truly amazing women who are also on the path of self-discovery. And they have wisdom to share with you as well. It's not just me talking. That's why I love the monthly calls. Because it's not only me. I get to sit back and listen. I get to hear the thoughts of the goddaughters. They share information with each other. This is family. And if you desire to be here in a space that, once again, is about your elevation, about you gaining personal wisdom, about you finally letting go of those who have tried to decide or have been deciding how you to live, how you live in your life and what is acceptable and unacceptable based upon what they say, come join us. We have protocols over here. Absolutely. Do we? we have, there are protocols over here and expectations. Absolutely. Absolutely. No ratchetness, so to speak. No, there's no negativity, there's no narcissism, there's zero, zero anything that is harmful to self and to others. This is purely you learning how great you are. So if you're coming to the side of the world, if you're coming into the space with us, once again, today is the final day for the 90% off. This is it. It's your last chance. 11.59 p.m., by midnight, I mean midnight, Monday, 11 27, 2023, the specials are gone. There'll be something different for Cyber Monday, but this is the last day, final day for the 90% off. So I look forward to seeing those of you that have joined already and looking forward to seeing those of you who decide to join today. I adore you. I appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Bye bye.